Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is March 20. I said May almost in my mind. I didn't say it out loud, I guess. March 26th here in New York. Uh, did, did, I've been, um, uh, I just, uh, yeah, just going to do an RNG poem. What I wanted to say was uh, I actually forgot a couple of holidays that uh, I, I need to do that. Um, I need to uh, kind of, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, it, it, these videos are always a little bit awkward just because, you know, uh, the daily videos, I, like today is the 26th, but the problem is the day 27th problem because I'm here in New York and the time zone is weird with respect to legal stuff. So I always like miss holidays and uh, I like to give props to people, you know, during holidays, but or like just not props, but like, you know, just be like happy holidays and stuff like this. And like, for example, one of the ones that, you know, I like to say is, uh, Holly is obviously a bit Holly the holiday <laughs> was like a couple of days ago that I forgot. So definitely if you celebrate that and you're watching this, you know, uh, happy Holly, I think. Uh, I always love that festival of colors. It's very Instagrammable, I guess. Uh, and then, you know, Ramadan obviously is still going on, right? So, um, yeah. But I just feel like, um, yeah. Uh, I don't usually... Um, practice Ramadan. I don't know if that's the quite the right way to, to, say, to phrase it. I mean, I don't fast for Ramadan during the Ramadan, but I do uh, uh, I do, do a, uh, an all-day fast on the last day generally to kind of, you know, just do it with, with people and friends and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, Alright, anyway, I don't know. A little bit of a side note. Let's get, take a look at today's poem. 1016, binary string with substrings representing 1 to N. Medium with a lot of downwards for some reason. Given a binary string S and a positive integer N, we turn true the binary representation of all integer in the range 1 to N are substrings of S or of force otherwise. A substring is a contiguous sequence of characters within a string. Okay. Hmm. This is kind of a weird poem, but we'll play around with it. N could be pretty big, so we definitely don't... Um... Yeah, I mean, I think we have to try to figure out. Hmm. I, I, to be honest, I don't really have a good idea about this. I mean, obviously, um, we can start off with. Um, you know, brute force, but brute force may be a little bit tricky, right? Just because there's a lot of numbers. That said, I think brute force may actually be a similar way to go, right? Because you actually don't have to brute force that much. Uh, and what I mean by that is that with n is 10 to the 9, there's no possible way, right? Why is that? Because that means that the string has to have 10 to, is it true? Maybe not 10 to the 9, but like 10 to the 9 over 2 number of strings, right? Or something like this, right? The length. Um, because basically the idea here is that, okay, what is the shortest string that can represent two numbers, right? So like, you know, uh, or one digit binary number, I guess is how I want to say it, which is why I said two numbers, right? So that's going to be two because it's 01, so two. So that means that, um, yeah, 01 is going to be um, just two, right? And then the next one is the three-digit ones, right? Or oh, sorry, two-digit ones first. Then you have something like this. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe that's not quite right because of the prefix. Because I'm, I'm thinking about it in terms of, um, what's it called? Um, uh, leading zeros. Sorry, I'm just like blanking out the name. Right, so in terms of, because otherwise then this may be it, right? Because you have 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 0. But you don't even need this 0, I think. So you can just do, this is 1, uh, this is 2, this is 3, right? Uh, so maybe 3 is the most for, or the least for 2. But yeah. And then for 4 digits, right? Or for, sorry, for 3 digits. Uh, for 3 digits... Because I think this, I mean, it doesn't show up that easily because we, we got rid of the zero. But every time you go to the next one, it approximately doubles, right? So that means that for length is equal to a thousand, 
it only goes up to n is equal to um, uh, well a thousand or something, right? So, like, yeah, because it's just the, there's no possible way to go all the numbers beyond that. So in that sense, I think brute force is the way to go. But the hard part, obviously, is the thinking about it and thinking through the process and stuff, right? Because I think the and this there's a number. For, uh, what is that name for this? These kind of numbers. There's a uh, a very specific name for these kind of numbers that I'm blanking out right now as well. Because it doesn't really come up that much, except for like in cryptography or something like this, right? Um, bits uh, or substring. Something. I don't know. I'm trying to Google it real quick, but. Because there's a very specific name for this, but and it doesn't really come up in the. It's like after, it's a name that's after some some person, but I forget who the person clearly. But, um, because it basically, um, because the way to think about it, the the way to think about generating it, um, is actually thinking, which is kind of ridiculous for me to say is um, to find an Euclidean path on a n-dimensional binary cube or something like this, right? Or, that's, or n-dimensional hypercube. I think that's, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it, it which is like an, uh, like I said, a, a path of n-dimension hypercube, right? Which is like something I, of course, uh, uh, basically, this is my pickup line at a party, you know? Like, hey, would you like to hear more about the Olympian path of this n-dimensional hypercube? Um, but no, no, no. But, but that's basically how... And if you think about an n-dimensional uh, hypercube, there were actually... A, um, you know, and if you actually know what I'm talking about... Oh, actually, I guess let me step back for a second. Okay, so what is an n-dimensional hypercube, right? So a two-dimensional cube is a square, right? And maybe one dimensional is just a line, I suppose. And then two dimensional is a square, three dimensional is an actual cube, and then four dimensional is this, you know, hypercube. You've maybe seen diagrams before. It looks like a cube inside a cube or something. Uh, I mean, of course, that's just a three D project or a three D shadow of a four D object, right? Or something like this. Uh, and then it gets more, right? And then, of and basically, if you f kind of try to find an Euclidean path, that's how you would get it. Um, and of course, if you think about it that way, if you even if you look at just a square, right? If you look at a simple square. There are two ways to go, right? If you have like, um, you know, um, yeah, there's two ways to go, and then you get like different results, right? Um, and oh yeah, and. Eh. But, but yeah, but they all actually gives you, um, uh, they all actually gives you the same and or like not the same answer, but, but a different possible solution to the answer. Right. So that's basically the idea. Um, yeah, let me try. I'm still trying to find this bit thing. <laughs> I forget what the term is. Oh yeah, that's right. The debut, the debut sequence. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, here. I'm. I'm. All right. So I did find it. Um, so okay. So I, I didn't make this up. Uh, it is kind of crazy that uh, I do remember all these things a little bit, a little bit, not too much, clearly. Uh, for people in the future who thinks that basically I'm just pulling things out of my. But yeah, um, but yeah, but basically the idea here is that, like I said, you, from this, this sequence, you're able to get the substring that everything is, and um, and as I also said, you know, uh, you can. Oh, is it Hamiltonian? Hmm. Well, I guess the audience cycle it makes more sense because you have to look back. That's the part that I was like a little bit weird about. So okay, so it's a cycle. So okay, that makes sense because. Because that's the thing that I was saying here, where like eh, it looks a little bit weird because technically you should also loop back zero zero, so maybe something like this, but I don't know. Uh, but then also like you get rid of the leading zero, um, I don't know, right? 
but yeah, but as I said, you can think about this on n dimension. Anyway, so the short answer here is that um, for n for d digits, binary digits, you need yeah, you need something that's two to the, like this because if you have a for every dimension you add to this hypercube. You actually multiply or everything by two, right? So in that sense, um, if you have one uh, digit, it has two. If you have two digits, it's four. If you have three digits, it's eight, and so forth, right? So if you count it that way, then it it just and you only have a length of one thousand by the print uh, principle, the principle of pigeonhole principle. Um, then you just run out of things very quickly, and because of that then you can kind of just brute force, right? Because now you know that most things are not possible. Um, so yeah, so we can just do lengths of... And even t 10 to the 9 means that... What does 10 to the 9 mean, right? That means that the binary number representing 10 to the 9 is only 2 to the 30 or something like this, right? So 2 to the 30, right? Oh, the other way around, right? Sorry. Um... I don't know why I have different notations, so let me uh, kind of, right? And so as a result, there's, you only have to loop, you know, you do a sliding window on dirty numbers, or dirty, um, dirty times n, and that should be fast enough. So that's basically the idea. Uh, I kind of spend a lot of time talking about this, uh, maybe, you know, just to make myself sound smart, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, but that's kind of, maybe this is why this shorter proof instead of kind of doing it this way. But I wasn't thinking about it this way quite yet. Uh, or at least, like, for me, it wasn't, um, actually, uh, yeah, I don't know, I kind of, I think it's because I know a little bit about this, which is, you know, how I came up with this, that I kind of got blinded by the more obvious uh, answer. Uh, and the more obvious answer is that, um, yeah, uh, D for the number of binary digits is the most dirty, so that means that we can loop D times N times, and that should be good enough. So let's do that, um, yeah. Uh, so the way that I like to do it, I don't know if this is, you know, it's just, uh, oops. Uh, I think it's just this minus 2 for the OX, right? It's going to give you the number of digits, right? Uh, and uh, now it is just having a... S yeah, mm, that's fine. And then now we do a loop, right? So for small d and range of is it inclusive? Now it's one to d plus one, right? And then now maybe we have a like a set. This you go to set, right? And then just yeah, like I said, sliding window, right? Hmm. What reason I don't have? Ah, this is terrible. Uh, I don't know, used, say, or C. That's why I have the S, but yeah. Uh, and then sliding window is just going to be current, is equal to zero, right? Oops. Uh, and then if I minus D is greater than equal to zero, because we're sliding that d out, then current subtract by int s of i minus d times uh, eh, two t two to the power of d, I think. If it's one digit, then you subtract. I think this is right. Maybe I'm off by one, but it's fine. And then now scene dot add current, right? Yeah, and then basically here we return true at the end, but here now we can say, um, yeah. Mm. I guess I, I did it this way so that I can terminate early, but maybe I don't need to, to be honest. Maybe that's fine. Maybe I'm just being a little bit too aggressive about it. And then now you can just maybe do it. I mean, 
you could definitely optimize, but I'm doing it in a lazy way. Uh, right? So yeah, so then from one to the, the, the oh, I guess we didn't need to represent zero, which was, yeah, okay, fine. Right, if I not in scene, we return false, right? So that's basically it. Uh, whoops. Then, oh, whoops. Right, more examples. Let's give it a submit. Hopefully I didn't make a silly mistake. And there you go. Uh, yeah. That's what I have with this one. Uh, <laughs> let me know what you think. I don't know why they're that many downloads. This is actually a pretty cool concept. Um, it comes up a lot in, I mean, not this particularly, but ideas like this where you exploit some parts of the constraint that you might not necessarily, you know, um, begin with the idea of. Um, this comes up a lot in competitive programming. Um, so definitely if you are into competitive, you definitely need to be able to be good at this. Um, and yeah, I don't know that much about interviews. Or I mean, I, I don't know if this kind of problem comes up that much on interviews. It is, it is very uh, constraint specific, but yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about this one. Uh, let me know how, how everything is. Uh, yeah, uh, stay good, stay healthy. Uh, oh wait, I didn't, well, I mean, I, I guess I, kind of went over the complexity, but let me do it more specifically for a sec. This is an O of D loop, D being the number of digits. This is an O of N loop, so this is going to be D times N, right? Uh, time, and also space, because that's how much we, we used here. Um, and yeah, that's all I have with this one, though. <laughs> Keep it si simple. Uh, stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see you out, I'll see you out later, and take care. Bye-bye.